Hi everyone, it's Justin. Some weeks ago I did a video on fashion trends, the trends that I see coming this fall winter soon. On that video, in that video, I showed a board that was all about belts. Narrow ones, white ones, low ones, high ones, all types. The next logical question would then be how to wear and style belts. Indeed, good question. So in today's video, I want to give you some inspiration on that matter from my wardrobe, belts that I own myself, styled the way I would wear them. So I hope you feel inspired and I also give you some tips on the way because tips are always useful, aren't they? The first type of belt that every one of you watching right now owns already, that's no surprise, is the typical pants belt. It's functional, it's not decorative, it's just here to prevent your waistline from sliding downwards when you sit down. <laughs> It's discreet enough to not attract the attention. It's a simple black belt with a simple buckle. Ideally, you own one like this in black for black pants and jeans, blue jeans. Then you own a white one for lights and white jeans. And you can also own colorful ones to go a bit bolder. And then you can match your belt with your shoes, your purse, any other accessory, or with your lipstick if you're fancy. <laughs> so having a couple of basic belts is actually useful in your wardrobe because they match any kind of outfit you want to put together. Let's very quickly move on to the types of belts that you don't see as often because that's the more interesting part of the video. A very wide belt, a massive one, very stiff, that sits loosely on the hips, I think brings a lot of personality and strength to the silhouette. My version of it even goes around the body twice. It's not tight at all, so it's very comfortable and it can make a straight top or a straight dress a lot more interesting. This one is massive and I love it exactly this way. Hidden bonus, since it accentuates my hips, my waist proportionally looks a lot thinner. The bigger the belt, the more you can use it to change your proportions and play with the proportions of the silhouette. That's something to keep in mind. Then there are belts that are frankly more decorative than functional, like this one here. It's super slim. It doesn't actually hold anything you couldn't use to prevent your pants from sliding down. But with this design detail, you can, you can position this detail as an accent somewhere in your outfit, in your hair, <laughs> um, as you want and make it very personal. I like to wear this slightly on the side at the level of my natural waist, on a top or on a dress, very flexible. I feel it works in many, many different ways. And if I'm wearing black, then it also sets an accent of color at the same time, which is nice. Another kind of belt that I really like is a fabric belt that looks a little bit like a Japanese obi. Like this, it's, it's very flexible and very light. You know, obi was the uh, kind of belt geishas wore over kimonos to highlight the waist. It's very thin, very elegant. I like that it's white. I wear it fitted, tight at the front, but I guess you could just as well tie it at the back. And I think it looks best when it doesn't have the color of the top over which you're wearing it. This is the perfect belt if you want to highlight your waist as an hourglass or as a pair, for instance. And because it has a light color, it looks pure and innocent somehow. The colors that you choose have an impact on how people perceive you at first sight. That's no new news, but not just for the clothing, also for the accessories. Next, if a belt is made of a stronger, thicker, more winter-like material, you can perfectly also wear that over several layers of clothing which gives it a lot of flexibility and possible options. For example, if you're wearing a loose cardigan or a flowy drapey sweater like this one, you can belt it to change the silhouette completely. Such a belt can be placed at the waist level to accentuate your natural waist or higher up and then you're creating an empire silhouette, which is something totally different. It makes the sweater look even more flowy and if you're wearing perfume, then the flowiness will help spread the fragrance around you when you walk. The hardest belt to find is one that matches your outfit in color and in fabric, or at least fabric weight. But especially in summer, I think that when the belt matches the outfit, it's extremely chic. So this is a 20s, 20s looking <laughs> belt, which I wear over a green dress of that exact fabric. Hard to find, but doable. It looks more harmonious and flexible than when the belt is stiffer than what you're wearing underneath. So as I said, it's especially perfect in summer. It's not easy to find, but look for that when you go shopping. Often a fabric used on the clothing will also be used for an accessory, like a little clutch or a belt. That works if you're buying the garment and the belt in the same season, because chances that you find that fabric 
again at that brand next season is really, really low. So make sure you find the garment and the accessory at the same time. So that's it. I hope you feel inspired to try different types of belt this fall or already this summer. Why not? This was the trend board that I shown in the video on fall trends and you can see how much a belt can really change the entire silhouette. It's a very powerful accessory. Thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much. And I'm considering doing another Q&A video. The last one I did was a month ago. So if you have questions that you'd like me to answer in a video facing you, feel free to write them down below. See you Wednesday and Sunday. Here are two videos for you to watch until next time. Take care. Bye-bye.